Hey, how you doing everyone? This is Brett Gibbons from papercartridges.com. One of the most common questions I'm asked is how do you make cartridges for your dry seed needle rifle? So I thought I'd do this video and show you how I make mine. Other people make them uh, in many different ways. So this is simply what I do for mine. This isn't the definitive right or wrong way. Uh, the most complicated piece of your dry seed cartridge is going to be the Sabo or the tribe spiegel as the Prussians called it. I use the historic Langblei bullet. This is the 1855 style bullets. Uh, gave them a little bit better muzzle velocity over the original. And uh, this is what they were using in the Austro-Prussian War in 1866 and the Danish War in 64, which is the era of shooting that I enjoy, the eight, approximately the 1860s. So. I use this bullet uh, with this Sabo. Others have had great success with their dry Z's shooting uh, round ball and making Sabos for those. But I like shooting at long range, uh, at least over 200 yards. And I find that the Tribe Spiegel with the Langblei bullet uh, gives me a better performance at long range because of the length and the weight of the bullet. So making your Sabo, I use uh, cheap manila folder paper, just for regular office folders. 30% um, recycled, I get it at Staples. I cut it uh, 3 quarters of an inch thick, and it's 11 and a half inches long. And on the end that I roll up first, I make about a 4 inch diagonal cut. This just helps seat the bullet a little better. I roll it up on a mandrel that is 0 .480 inches thick. Now. Uh, your mandrel diameter will vary depending on how thick of a paper you use. Uh, the historic paper was very thin and it was extremely long that they rolled up. Um, I use this because it's uh, a little bit faster, a little bit easier. I use good old Elmer's wood glue. Slather a good bit on. You want actually quite a bit of glue that I thin with a little bit of water because I really want it to soak in to this paper and this manila will absorb the glue water mix so that when it's rolled up, it will be very hard. That's what we want. We want a hard, solid tribe spiegel. And this gets rolled up on the mandrel. So the narrow in first, triangular or uh, angled cut at the top and you want to roll it up as evenly as possible. Don't let the paper drift north or south on your mandrel, if you can help it. The length of your sabo is critically important uh, because that corresponds with the length of your needle. Every Dreisa rifle is different, so this may or may not work for you. Odds are, if you have a Dreisa, you're already familiar with the challenge of getting your needle to reach your priming compound. So that part's done. That's the hard part. Uh, next, I used two cutouts from uh, a piece of fairly heavy cardstock here, which is from a Civil War reenactment uh, several years ago, but. It's just heavy paper. It's about the consistency of cardstock. And uh, I'll use my Hobby Lobby punch. This one makes an adorable little flower shape. I like the flower shape because the ends of this will fold in as it gets pressed into the Sabo. And these will form a solid base on our Sabo for our priming compound. It'll all make sense in a moment. A little more glue. Then I use a eight millimeter Mauser case just because the size of the neck is the right size I need. You can use anything for this, ink pen, uh, dowel, but uh, I happen to have an eight millimeter case and that works well for me. I take these little flower shaped pieces and they get punched into the Sabo. And they will form a nice base at the bottom. Um, once the glue dries that's soaked into them, they will be a very solid and firm base for our priming compound. 
Next I take, these are 24 gauge shotgun wads that I've just cut in half with a razor. Uh, the one half I will glue to the base of the bullet, or the sable rather. Pop it right on there. This helps prevent the sable from unraveling in the barrel. It gives it a good base to drive it forward along with the bullet instead of punching through the center because we are using a, a hollow sabo that can uh, unravel if it simply blows through the middle. The other one, the other uh, half of the wad that I've cut, I just pop a hole through the center of it with the regular old hole punch. And this gets glued right onto the top of the last one. And that will form my priming composition pocket. And again, this is how I do them. Everyone seems to have their own particular method that they like. Let that dry a bit. I've tried every conceivable method of firing my dry Z uh, cartridges. Uh, like most people, I've used musket caps with my rifle. Maybe it's just my rifle. I tend to bend the needles using the brass or copper uh, musket caps. I've tried them at every conceivable depth, uh, whether they're long or short, the needle's been. Then I tried Primal compound that people use for making 22 um, rimfire reloads. That didn't bend my needles, but it had about a 50% ignition rate. So it was uh, a lot of frustration at the range. Now I use caps, uh, toy roll caps that are dirt cheap. You can get a you know, 600 of these uh, for like a dollar or two. But you have to look for the ones that are made in Germany. Uh, a lot of the ones you find are from China and they are garbage. So look for the ones made in Germany. And I punch them out with the whole bunch. I'm not sure if you can see this, but I tr punch them out right at the edge. Let's see if you can see. I don't know if you can see that or not, but they're at the very, the priming composition is at the very edge. And I use three of them in every sabo. A little bit of glue is still in the priming pocket. That's perfect, that's what we want. So that they won't move. And I put them in a clover leaf shape so that the needle has the largest target. So they kind of make a bit of a tripod clover leaf shape in here. One, two, and three. And believe it or not, these little caps will do an outstanding job of firing, of, of igniting when, uh, when your needle strikes them. They don't make very much ignition when they're hit though, they are tiny little toy caps, so I will add a touch of 3F powder in this little primer, primer pocket to act as a booster to flash through and ignite the main charge. Now for a while I was just taking regular paper, punching out a correctly sized circle shape of paper, gluing that right on, and believe it or not, I found that the regular thickness of paper was containing this charge and it was not communicating to the main powder charge. So now I use nine pound onion skin paper. This is the same paper I use for my British Enfield uh, cartridges, Pritchett cartridges. And I nitrate them, so I've soaked these in uh, saltpeter. So that this flame is gonna burn right through the center of this paper, no questions asked and that will communicate it through th to the rest of my charge. And this just gets glued. Uh, let me try to use a lighter bit of glue around the edge. Try. And that will seal in my primer and booster charge. And the saber was almost done. Next up, I cut 
the four notches in it. This helps release the bullet as it leaves the muzzle and it also holds the bullet tight. You see how soft this is now? Um, but when it's dry, it will be, you know, extremely hard and almost uh, rock solid like this one is. In fact, I think that'll crack if I uh, try to bend it too hard. So your tribe spiegel is done. This is the completed sabo. Uh, with this system, the needle does not reach, at least how I have it in my rifle, it will not reach the end of the bullet, so it won't smack into the base of your bullet and bend your needle. There's a, about a quarter inch gap between the end of the bullet and the end of your, uh, the base of the sabo. So we'll put that aside. Now we gotta make the case. I use 25% cotton rag typing paper. I serrate the end with uh, serrated scissors. You don't have to do that. I just find that this helps seal the case up a little bit better. You get a cheap old glue stick. I do about a quarter inch thick strip on the serrated edge and then about a half inch thick strip on the other edge. And this gets rolled up on a mandrel that is 0 0.660 inches in diameter. I have a plastic plastic uh, mandrel that I use for other cartridges. It wasn't quite thick enough, so I made this out of paper and tape. Slides right on, gives me the right diameter. And I roll it up so that the glued portion does not come in contact with this and make it all sticky and nasty. And that gets rolled up. You don't really want to make it too tight. It only has to be tight enough to prevent uh, powder from trickling between the sabo and your paper. Now this next step's a little bit tricky. Uh, you need to seal the base of your tube. So I use a punch from good old Hobby Lobby and a piece of aluminum tubing. And just as luck would have it, none of this was purpose, but I rummaged around and just found things that worked. This perfectly forms a cup-shaped piece of paper that I can use for the bottom of my dry -see cartridge tube. I'll stick it on there. Right up inside, up to the serrated edges, and I fold them over. So those have been glued. And I just press them closed, and that's that done. Normally I'd let that dry, but since this is uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm going to go ahead and fill it with powder. I use about 57 grains of 1F powder. The historic charge was 4 grams, or about 62 grains, but I take it slightly easier on the old girl because she is 167 years old. <laughs> so, a little bit less powder. Still give me all the performance I need for hobby shooting. I'm not fighting Austrians or anything. And then the sabo that we made. Sometimes these are a little tight to get down. Yeah, this one is. because it is still swollen from the glue. So I'm going to cheat and use one that I have already made a little earlier. Slide that one and see, beautiful. And there's the Langlai. And you don't have to press it down to seat it very hard. The next step will do that quite well for you anyways. Uh, the string I use is just cheap old hemp, uh, Cotton and linen, I find, tends to snap as I tighten it, so I like using the hemp. I form my knot. The knot, by the way, is just uh, two half hitches, one over the top of each other, and that will that'll form a nice tight knot when it's tightened. And I line it up with the top of the bullet in the paper, or maybe even a little bit higher. 
and that gets cinched closed. And as you cinch it, it will stretch the paper and tighten it. It squeezes it tight. Um, and so there's no powder rattling, nothing shaking in there. This is a tight cartridge. Probably should have waited a little longer for that glue to dry, but I think we're fine. Just cut that off. And the only step left now, finally, is you just dip the nose of the cartridge in your favorite black powder bullet lube. I use 50-50 tallow and beeswax because I live in a desert. And when we go shooting in the desert, the temperatures are frequently well over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And if I just used tallow or a tallow heavy lube, uh, the lube would be on everything else other than the cartridge by the time we got it out to shoot in that sort of heat. So I use a heavier beeswax. Uh, your mileage may vary depending on where you live. I'm not in, I'm not on the Baltic coast, so uh, I add a little more beeswax. But that's it. I found that these uh, toy cap uh, primer percussion system that I use, uh, it is darn near 100% reliable. Uh, the caps always go off, these, the little caps always go off. The challenge has been getting that tiny little spark they make to communicate to the powder charge. But uh, now that I've figured out to use nitrated paper and the uh, 3F booster charge in there, I haven't had any problems. They all um, fire with uh, outstanding reliability. And the best part, I don't bend or break my needles, which are uh, a pain in the rear to repair when they break. So anyway, I hope this has been useful to you. Uh, I've rambled on long enough. Uh, so for those of you that have stayed on this long. If you have a Dreissen needle rifle and you are interested in my bullets, they are available on papercartridges.com. Um, unfortunately, the maker of my mold no longer is making them. So if you want to have a, a Langbly bullet mold, you'll have to do a, a custom mold for that. If you don't want to bother with that, uh, I do have them available on my website at papercartridges.com along with a bunch of other information on the Dreissey rifle, the its arch enemy, the Lorenz rifle, and a bunch of other mid-19th century black powder rifles. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Thanks. Thank you.